so this video that you're about to watch is the first part of the flatting video that is part of the Learn to Color Comic Books 101 online video course. Uh, it's also part of the free trial uh, that is available for the course, but I figured since I've been sharing um, all the other free videos, uh, free trial videos onto my YouTube channel, I thought I would share it here as well. I know I already have a flatting video on the YouTube channel, but there may be some other information that I didn't include in that one that'll be in this one. So um, give it a watch and you know you might find something valuable here. Thank you. All right, now we finally actually get to start actually doing some coloring. Something actually interesting. Uh, but first, I'm gonna show you, seems like a tease, doesn't it? Uh, but, but first I'm gonna show you um, just a good way of uh, organizing your work files. So uh, well, here, of course, is the um, art that we're going to be coloring for this demo. Now I'm going to go to where I keep my work stuff. Here's my work folder. Here's some of the uh, clients I've worked for recently, and then I've already created a Learn to Color, where I've been putting all the stuff that I've been putting together to do these tutorials. And I'm going to create a new folder. I'm going to call this one see, L2C101. So that's, you can call that whatever, that's basically the name of the project. And then I usually create a folder line art. And I put the line art file in that one. So there's that. And then I create one called flats. One called renders. And in this I have two. One called oop, color. And one called fx. And then tiffs and JPEGs. All right. Now let's go ahead and let's open up the line art. Open with Photoshop. All right, and there it is. Uh, this is a piece that my friend Chad Thomas did for me. All right, and the well, first thing I'll point out is you'll notice that this is in bitmap. Um, bitmap is a color mode uh, that basically only allows you to have exact black and white. And with this type of like art, again, it's similar with the anti-aliasing, see, it's black and white. And for this type of art, that's what you want. You don't want to have um, any of the gray in there. And I know it looks a little jagged when you zoom in, but since it, actually, let's go look at the image size. Yeah, see, it's at 11 by 17, 600. That's more. Uh, that that's the larger file size than we really need. So th this, in print, um, in print, this is going to look fine. It's going to, and it's going to have really crisp lines. All right. So, but next, I want to show you how to set up a flat file. First thing. Want to check our color settings, and all right for the RGB, I like using Adobe RGB, and then for CMYK, this is actually a custom. I was going to show you. So I like uh, swap standard, uh, UCR selected, and then I like to have the black ink should be at 100, and total ink limit is at 300 percent. And that's the settings you want. So, so once you have it set like that, you have that OK. Go to OK. Um, now I'm going to do go to grayscale. Now it's in gray. And now go down to edit, and we go to convert to profile. And we're going to want our ro our work eh, our working profile to be the Adobe RGB. So we hit. Okay. 
and now it's an RGB. Let's see, do I have? Yeah, and then all right, I have this action here. And actually, to tell you the truth, this does, I think, everything I just showed you. But I just wanted to make sure you knew about the uh, color mode thing. So, um, let's go back to the palette. Go to Open, so the way it was when we opened. Go to Actions. Click on Flats Prep. And hit Play. And there we go. Now the line art is over here. It's we're in the RGB mode, and we are ready to start uh, what's called flats. We're basically putting in putting in our flat colors. Uh, one of the things to note, since we are in RGB, and RGB is a color mode that represents how we see light. So it, it's um, it's like a computer or television or something. They, those are all display in RGB because it's light coming out at us. Uh, however, print is pigments, which is ink, and that's CMYK. So that's what the final thing is going to be in. So we want to make sure that Photoshop is simulating print. So we go to proof colors. Or right, make sure your proof setup is on your working CMYK. And then you go to proof colors or you can do command Y another keyboard shortcut and now and you can see over here at this little tab at the top you know it shows all right we're working in RGB but we're seeing it in CMYK so as we add colors it's going to show up as it will in print or a close approximation to it all right so now I'm going to show you how I like to do my flats Let's see, let's select all. Alright, I'm going to put the background, I think, with a light yellow. That looks pretty good. And then, I'm going to come down here. Pretty much, I'm using the lasso tool now. Pretty much, but though when I'm flatting, um, I like to just try to break it down. You know, start off with by breaking it down into simple shapes here. So basically, that yellow is going to be the extreme background. And also notice with my lasso, <laughs> I should have mentioned this before, I has a negative by it, which means I'm subtracting. And uh or do that when like when you first select the lasso tool, you press down command, I believe, so that you get the negative so you subtract from your current selection. Going on the outline with this middle ground here. And there'll probably be, now that I'm actually working, there'll probably be a lot of my silent pauses. I'm going to try to describe what I'm doing as I do them. Uh, but sometimes I'm just going to be doing something that might not require uh, a description. But I want, I'm, I'm not going to cut anything out or at least very little, um, just because I think it's valuable to see the whole process, even the repetitive boring parts. Actually, I hit 
instead of doing what I was just doing there, I'm going to hit uh, space bar, which gives me the hand. So you can, that's the thing, when you have the lasso tool and you're zoomed in, hit the space bar, it allows you to be able to move it around while you're using the lasso tool. But also if you hit the space bar and then hit uh, option, then you can zoom out. So now I can zoom out and just do that. There we go. Hold on. Okay, I was wrong before. See, it's all muscle memory, so I don't remember what I'm hitting. Okay, but when you have the lasso tool and you want to subtract, actually really any selection tool, and you want to subtract from a current selection, you hit Option. I said Command earlier. I was wrong. It's Option. All right, so now I'm going to fill the middle ground with a green. Let's see. I think I'm going to go with that green. There we go. And that's the middle ground with all of the uh, foliage, I guess would be called. And now again, subtracting from the selection with the lasso tool. Gonna get this little window of foliage. Actually, I subtracted that little bit there. I think that's part of the ground, so I'm going to add it again. Adding lasso tool with the uh, shift. You press shift before you start subtracting your or so start. Ah. You hit shift before starting your selection to add to it. Now again, option lasso tool to subtract. Yeah, because if you don't hit Option or Shift when you, oops, uh, when you go in with a to modify your selection, you'll just end up deselecting what you've already been working on. And starting a new selection. So right now we don't want to do that. We're modifying the selection that we got. You notice I'm just going through the figures. I'm just working on the environment at the moment. Breaking down the environment into sections. Oops, zoom out again. Alright, I'm going to zoom in over here, grab these little thrown rocks or pebbles or dirt or whatever it is. Alright, uh, Z, let's zoom out, I'm going to pick a s sandy color, I think that one will work. That's the ground. Okay. So now we have that. And you know, again, forgetting things. I often go out of order. All right. Just so you know, we want we want to preserve the line art file just in case we need it again. So I'm hitting Save As, Shift Command S, go into Flats. I save in there. When we're doing a work file, saving a work file, we want it as Photoshop. Uh, TIFF is more for the compression that's bet, you know, a smaller compression that's better for delivery. But when you're working on it, you want uh, Photoshop, which is PSD. All right, saving in the flats folder. Okay, that was important. Should have done that before we started, but uh, at least we did it before I hit save. All right, now I'm going to select another color. This one I'm going to use for the dinosaur. I'm actually going to give him kind of a reddish, dull reddish color. All right, zoom in. 
starting a new selection and I'm going this one I'm actually going to end up selecting the dinosaur and the little caveman robot guy Sometimes you can go a little bit faster by zooming out a bit. I'm going to try using a regular lasso in some places. I mean, the problem with zooming out a bit, of course, you don't want to zoom out too far because you want to stay in the line like this. should mention normally I hire someone to do the flats for me uh, just because it's kinda putsy work and I'm not the fastest at it it would be faster if I did it more often myself but it's still a time saver to have someone else do it for me and when I have someone else do it for me then then I can just go in with the wand tool, select the shapes they already defined, and then just put in the proper colors, which is a lot faster than doing the whole thing myself. Uh, and also that's something if you're uh, looking to make some money doing this sort of thing, you could start trying to um, you know, be a flatter for a colorist. If you do get really fast at it, um, you know, you can, act, you know, actually make, I don't know, some money off of it. I guess, I guess some actually make a living off of it, but I have a feeling the ones that make a living off of it, they seem, at least nowadays, to be uh, overseas. Uh, but there are, like, some American flatters that seem to do a lot of flats, so they might be able to make a living off of it. And I think it's, oh, accidentally double-clicked and it closed the, selection. But anyways, as I was saying, um, I think though flatting is a, you know, you know, good way to do something while you're trying to break in the, into the industry. Also, if you're like a student, I think it's a good to, you know, it might be a good thing to try and make a little bit of money on the side by doing some flats, some spending money. It's better. It's still better than, yeah. You know, doesn't pay well, but it's still better than uh, at least more fun than some part-time jobs. I mean, doing flats usually pays at least uh, ten dollars a page. So if you can get fast at doing fl flats, much faster than I'm going here, um, and you can manage to get, oops, that's I think still part of his, oh, that's how it goes. All right, I'm gonna have to come back and fix that. Uh, but anyways, yeah, if you can get fast enough where you could get an average page flat in an hour or less, you know, that's still like $10 an hour.
which isn't bad. If you have enough work to do, you, you might be able to get that to sustain yourself. This is supposed to be a space. There we go. Now I'm using the wand tool. Subtract the ground part. I th think I think that selection looks good. And I'll do that. Now the next section. I think I'm going to pick this blue here, and I'm going to do this kid. this little there. I use the wand tool, deselect the ground. Of course I have the ground going through his foot over here so I have to come back and retouch that up. There. And fill. Now it's time for the hero. I select a rich red
There's that. Deselect the kid with the wand. And fill. I also wanted to point out that um, if you start feeling like the, the these pallets and, are, and everything get in the way, if you hit tab, they disappear. And then of course hit tab again, they come back. Alright, so now we have the page basically breaking down into uh, basic segments. So actually I'm going to go down here and well, I'm going to actually fill these in, so I'm going to select that blue again. It's part of the kid. I hit B, Shift B, and select this. Now I'm on my pencil. I'm going to select this one, which makes a good thing. And with like a pencil, it's basically kind of like the anti-alias version, or the non-anti-alias version of the brush. So I can actually flat with that. Now, for small areas, this is great. I wouldn't suggest doing big areas, um, just because if you do a big area, sometimes you will miss a little tiny scrap, and it, you know, and the flats might not look as well. So I don't get into a habit of using the pencil too often, but on certain things like that. Like little details like that. All right. So next, I'm going to start. Um, now that we've got these basic shapes, I'm going to start adding more of the details. Oops. I'm going to unclick contiguous. So now it selects everything of this yellow color, the whole thing. And I'm going to hit Command J. So now. My yellow layer is copied to, an, or my yellow area is copied to a new thing. I'm going to hit the question mark to lock that layer. And now the only thing I will be affecting is this yellow shape. So I'm going to select the volcano. as well as the smoke rising from the volcano. Actually, I didn't need to do that. <laughs> See, since on the yellow letter gets affected, that's right. So I'm going to hit this kind of warm gray here, and there we go. That's the color of the volcano. And you notice as I filled, even though this area selected, it didn't get affected because I had the layer locked. All right, and now 
I'm going to do the lava running down the volcano and spurting out of it. I'm going to pick a brighter red. And I want to point out on the palette here, you see, I kind of have two seemingly identical reds here, like run of reds here. But there is a difference. You notice right, in this color palette up here, this shows um, hue, saturation, and brightness values of the colors. Uh, sometimes I like to tweak these. Um, but so let's select this red. And you notice that it's on this end. And I select this, the similar red over here. And now it's over here on the more pink end. So this one you know, has basically goes a little bit more pink, magenta-ish, and uh, but th this run right here tends to go more kind of like an orangish red, which re which uh, when you go rendering it will read more as a red. All right, so first I'm going to get these little scraps spurting out. Going to use the pencil tool again for that. Got this nice little small area. A little bigger. Oop, too big. I'll select the yellow. Also, when you're on the brush, I should point out, if you hit Option, it transforms the brush into uh, the color picker. So it's a quick way to pick a color. Go back to the red. And you see what I mean for like these smaller objects? Uh, it's much easier to flat with the pencil tool. Just when you get the larger, more complicated objects, I, d I, don't, I don't think it works as well because you tend to miss areas. And you want to make sure you have a solid color. Alright, actually since I'm here, I see this little gap here that I missed when I was doing this shape. Let's just fill that in like that. And you can kind of see a little line there. Um, but that's just because it's on a separate layer. If you zoom in further, it disappears. And when we uh, merge these layers, it'll go away. Alright, select the red again. Selecting the main lava flow here.
And as you can see, I'm. Oops, accidentally closed it. <laughs> Trying to demonstrate it. But. There we go. Um, as I'm using the polygon tip, I keep alternating between the regular polygon lasso and then hit option and get the regular lasso where I can freehand it a bit. Going back and forth makes it I don't know, a very natural way of selecting. Alright, get that out. Then with the red and the lava's done. Now let's I'm gonna select the whole gray color here. Go with the lasso tool. Separate out the actual volcano. So now I got the smoke coming out. And I'm going to use a dark red. Actually, I might use the one on the pinkish end. There. I'll try that. Alright, and now. Yeah, the. Oh, look at that. I messed this up too. Well, let's. Um, yellow area is basically done. I'm going to hit Command E to merge it down. So now back on the background layer. I want to fix this little area here. There we go. All right. Now the next part I'm going to select this green. Actually, I might. What green do I got? Look at the other greens I got because I'm not sure if I like it. Hmm. I kind of like that one better. I wanted something a little bit more duller to push it back. And now I hit Command J. Question mark. And now I can start separating the greenery into different shades. Make it more interesting and help separate the planes too. Sometimes I hit option for some reason it doesn't transform to the other lasso and it can almost mess up my selection.
this. Yeah, kind of like a bluish green there. That works I like that. Zoomed in a little too far. There we go.
I'll subtract this little piece from it. Do an even bluer. Yeah. That's going to be for the grassy bits. This part, try a deep green. Yeah, no, let's actually let's try this green. Mm. I think I like the other one better. Yeah, let's just keep it that one. Ah, I notice I messed up over here. Forgot that part was on the layer. Let's fix that really quick. There. And now the middle ground foliage is done. So Command E, merge it back down. Let's save our progress. Now I'm going to select the ground. Command J, question mark. Let's see, what color should I make the rocks? Slightly darker. Let's try this. Come on. 
computer slowing down here a bit. Probably because I'm recording this while working. Doesn't like it. computer slowing down a bit I am going to save and stop it there I hope you found that video useful please check out some of our previous videos for more tips and tricks also head over to our website where you'll be able to find our online video courses blog posts link to social media and a lot more and of course be sure to subscribe to our channel so you don't miss any of our future videos thank you again for watching and I hope to see you next time